to our Appalachian Victory Garden. It is now July, and as predicted, we've got a lot of bugs in the garden and 90 degree temperatures and 100% humidity, but we also have a lot of beans and tomatoes and onions and things we've been harvesting over the last couple of weeks. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, um, this is our Victory Garden for 2020. We decided to put in this garden here on our off-grid homestead and it, to kind of offset what's been going on around the world with the pandemics and shortages just to make sure that we had enough food here to provide for ourselves because it is quite a haul into town. It's about a 45 minute drive into town to get any kind of vegetables. So we wanted to make sure that we could uh, have enough to provide for ourselves here. And so this was kind of a test experiment for us. This is not the ideal way that we would do a garden out here. We would do raised beds. But as we're in the process of building a house up on the hill, we just don't have that area cleared to put, put in raised beds. So what we did here was we cleared plot of land, put down some landscape cloth because we don't have a tiller, it helps reduce our, our weeding, and we put in our garden. Um, so we're going to give you a quick tour and show you what's going on in the garden. Not a cucumber plant. This is my zucchini that I had thrown out here, and look at that, we're starting to get little zucchinis. Put that in our pouch. We're going to go inside. So the landscape cloth has been working pretty well. Uh, it does keep down weeds. We still have to weed the garden at least once a week. You guys saw in the intro there where the girls and I were weeding, that took us about an hour and a half for the three of us to weed the whole, I said three, for the three of us to weed the whole garden. Um, it, it has also been really, really rainy lately. And with all this rain, um, it has you know, kept us so that we didn't have to water the garden. And I would have to say that if we didn't, didn't have as much rain as we did. Watering the garden would be a real big issue. Um, and usually when commercial growers do put down this landscape cloth, they, they put some sort of irrigation um, or drip irrigation underneath the landscape cloth so that you don't have to water everything by hand. Um, and I think if you did not have as much rain as we did this year, actually watering everything by hand would be a real big deal. But because we didn't have to do that, it's been working out for us. This is our potato aisle, the first aisle. Uh, we already harvested a little bit. They're still itty bitty babies, but you can see some of them are starting to die off, which means we're going to be having some potatoes soon. Second aisle here, our lettuce is done. It bolted too hot of temperatures. We still have some onions, some carrots, a little bit of kohlrabi. Um, our extra onions that we put in the loose dirt over here are Patterson's. Um, they're kind of not doing as well in that back area. They're, that is partially shaded with that tree. So that's probably one of the reasons why. Next aisle over here. We talked about putting some seeds, planting seeds directly in this landscape cloth in the last video. And we ended up getting a few beets coming up through here. So we're going to be harvesting a few of those. Um, we have red beets here, golden beets here. Some of our Swiss chard starting to get a little bit funky with these hot temperatures. And our lettuce down at the end, we pulled that last time. All right, this is our onions. You guys remember we planted candy onions here. We've been harvesting these pretty heavy. These are ready to go. They didn't do as well as I would have hoped in this landscape cloth. I would say this is probably not the ideal situation for doing stuff like onions, but um, it, it wasn't bad when I mean, we got plenty of them. The, the Pattersons are down there and they're still growing. Marina's harvesting some zucchini and some cucumbers. We ended up having to thin out these zucchini plants. Uh, we had four plants in here and as you can see they just took off and got huge and they started getting real mildewy. Uh, so we, we made some extra space by cleaning out two plants and this thing is still monstrous for for what it is. It's actually growing more leaves than it is fruit at this point. Probably a little too much fertilizer in the ground there. And the cucumbers are doing wonderfully. They're, they're producing amazingly. But they are starting to see a little bit of blight on them. These are our uh, lima beans. And if you take a look, they are starting to pot up. We don't have seeds inside of them yet, so maybe, maybe a couple more weeks we'll be able to harvest these. 
These are our Roma tomatoes and these guys are doing wonderfully. They're just now starting to peak within this week. We pulled a couple off already and we already made one batch of Marina's tomato chips. If you guys haven't tried that recipe yet, we're gonna leave a link down in the description uh, to a video that we did a couple years ago. These things are amazing. If you haven't tried them yet, you can do them in the oven, do them in the dehydrator, do them in the sun oven, and they taste like little mini pizzas. And they're one of the main reasons we grow Roma tomatoes. So these guys are doing really good. Uh, we're gonna be harvesting a couple of those today. Next style is our green beans. All right, so these are our jade green beans and we have been eating green beans every day for like the last couple weeks now. These things are really prolific in producing green beans uh, and these things taste amazing. Down at the very end, we had our dragon tongue. We did get a couple harvests off of those, but for some reason, the bugs really seem to like those. We have a lot of uh, snails and slugs and um, also, the Japanese beetles have really been attacking a lot of our plants lately, but in particular, they seem to really go after those dragon tongue beans. So those plants were pretty much destroyed. We pulled all those up and we replanted more jade. I don't know if they're gonna grow uh, or germinate with these high temperatures, but we put them in just to see if they would. These are our German Johnsons, um, and these are a pink tomato. Actually, that one's not quite ripe, but I'm gonna pull it anyway. We'll see, let it ripen in the house. Um, they actually get really big. The one we have in the house is about that big. But these are a pink tomato. They're an heirloom and they are a fabulous slicing tomato. And these guys are just now starting, starting to pink up a little bit. Red cabbage and early jerseys. We've already har harvested one of these. Look at that beautiful head. Now I will say that the BT that we've been applying has been perfect for keeping the um, cabbage moss from laying eggs or from living uh, on these plants. Look at that, that's one of our early jerseys. That's beautiful. Now I've been using BT on these and uh, spinosad, and it has been keeping these guys from getting eaten up. They look beautiful. This one's ready to go. We're gonna be having that one for dinner. Peppers love the heat, and these guys are doing wonderfully this year. Um, we have some chocolate bells over here that we've already been picking, some green bells, some jalapenos up front, and our banana peppers are all along this other side. Good stuff. If you guys haven't had stuffed banana peppers, you can take like uh, a stuffing, like a turkey stuffing kind of recipe and put those inside of your green peppers, bake them in the oven with a little bit of cheese and they taste amazing. Herbs and some more of our beets. Those are doing pretty good. Um, not as well as I would have liked again because we were planting the seeds direct, but we had uh, didn't, done it. Marina and I have done a second seeding here, so some of those are starting to come up, but again, the bugs tend to like those tender leaves, and so they're kind of getting chewed on a little bit. But come up here and take a look at this. We got a baby eggplant. I did not expect this to uh, take off at all. It seems like, I don't know if you can see, they're like little ants that are eating this to death, and I just can't seem to keep them off. Uh, definitely DE doesn't work when it's raining all the time, but uh, regardless, I'm still getting some eggplant, so, or at least one eggplant, so maybe they'll be ratatouille in the future. If you look inside here, you can see baby okra. These are our two okra plants that we had planted, and they were looking pretty rough in the beginning. We had that freeze, remember, and uh, kind of really beat up my plants, and I didn't know if these were going to make it or not, but they seem to be doing pretty well, and we're hopefully going to have some spineless Clemson okra. These are our Brussels sprouts. Uh, now these probably won't be ready until late September. Um, you can start to see where we're getting little baby Brussels down here. That's where they're gonna grow. Unfortunately, these I just noticed are really starting to get some cabbage moth eggs on them. So we're gonna have to really spray these really good whenever we put down the BT. And we're gonna do that right after this video. And in our last row, we have our collards and our kale, and we just cleaned this all up and it's still gone. Uh, honestly, I'm pretty surprised that the kale is still going in these hot temperatures. It's usually more of a cold weather plant, but 
we got kale and it's tasting pretty good. Uh, and last but not least, on the outside of the fence is our sweet meat squash and we're getting little baby pumpkins on it. So these are our problematic Japanese beetles. Um, as far as I know, there's nothing you can do other than picking them off and drowning them. Um, I did read somewhere where you can use milky spore. It's, you have to take care of it and put it in the soil like the year before. Um, I guess it takes care of just the caterpillar or the larva stage of the Japanese beetle. Um, so it's kind of too late for this year for, for doing these. We've been picking them off, but they are just overwhelming. And so these plants on the outside, uh, these are our Kentucky runners, our Kentucky wonders, and they've just been destroying these and I've just been letting them eat these plants. And if they're eating these, they're leaving my other ones alone. Um, and that's pretty much all we can do with those. If anybody else has any suggestions or thoughts on like the uh, milky spore, if, they, if you've used that, leave comments down below. I know some people will mention Japanese uh, beetle traps. Um, I read some bad things about those where they actually encourage more beetles to come to your area and we don't not want to do that. So if you guys have any suggestions other than that for uh, Japanese beetles, leave it down below. And last but not least is our, the tallest decapitated sunflowers you will probably ever see. Actually, it looks like they are starting to get flowers on top, but the deer did come through and eat most of them when they were still about this high. Um, I think these might still flower, but I'm not 100% sure. But all the other ones definitely got got eaten by the deer, which were on the outside of the fence. Um, we have not had any trouble with deer other than that. This little rope that we keep on the outside does seem to have worked, or maybe they just decided not to jump the fence. Um, but our biggest issues in the garden have just been the Japanese beetles and um, mostly the um, slugs. So we've been spraying some caffeine for the slugs and Japanese beetles, I already talked about that one, I'm just picking them off. All right, so that about wraps up our Appalachian Victory Garden for July. I don't know if you've noticed, but we're all wearing these really cool aprons. They were sent to us from our friend Tamara over at the Rue Apron. Now, Tamara is a very small businesswoman. She created these because she's an avid gardener and she was tired of holding vegetables in her shirt. She'd go out to the garden and you know how it is. We've done that all of ourselves. So these things are really cool aprons where you can put whatever you want, all your veggies in there. You can put your weeds in there. If you watched our last video, um, you'll know that we put our grass seed in there and used it to spread our grass seed. Well, we're going to be doing a giveaway over on our Instagram channel. If you guys are interested in entering that giveaway, you can go over to at Guildbrook Farm on Instagram and you can enter in the comments section below. We'll have all the info over there. If you guys are interested in checking out Tamara's website, again, she's a small businesswoman. We like to try and support small business people as well on here. And you can go over to rueapron.com. Again, we're going to leave all the information down in the description. And hopefully you guys check these out and get these because they're really, really handy. Andy. We don't know if we're going to be doing an update in August yet on the garden, but if we are, we'll see you in August. Otherwise, we're going to begin being, we're going to continue to work on the house and we're going to update you on that. Hope you guys, if you have gardens, are all doing wonderfully and harvesting things and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.